What's up guys, my name is Fletcher Nelson and I'm a third grade teacher in Minnesota. If this is your first video you're seeing of mine, um, just a little background, this is my eighth year teaching. I do enjoy and love my job despite the topic of this video being, you know, reasons not to be a teacher. Um, I just want to point that out because I'm not trying to discourage anyone from being a teacher because I do really enjoy it. I've been asked if I would, if I could go back in time, but I'd still do it and I would. But does that mean that there's things that or that there's not things that need to change, there definitely are. And I just wanna make this video so people who are thinking about going into teaching aren't blindsided by these things so they can really make their choice. I mean, there's a teacher shortage for a reason. And a lot of these things, I'm lucky that my school or district, I don't feel these things, but there's some that are a whole system within our country that need to be addressed. Otherwise, we're gonna have even more of a teacher shortage. So let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about, I think I have six or seven reasons on why you should not be a teacher. So let's get started. The first reason for me, and this one is one I think is system wide, is the pay. I'm gonna put a screenshot of my pay scale right now. Um, this is of our most recent contract, and as you can see, it doesn't look awful if you're starting around 40,000 your first year teaching out of college. But the thing that you don't realize is that a big chunk of like, like well, taxes come out of there obviously, and then like your teacher retirement, your pension, that's a big amount so your paycheck isn't what you're really expecting um, and also this has gotten a little bit better since I started my first year teaching I made thirty three thousand dollars I made sixteen hundred dollars a month and I had to pay for my car payment my rent my student loans um, my utilities I had like no money left the other issue with this is the only way to get a raise with a teacher, and I didn't know this before I came one, is years of experience. So if you look at that pay scale, every year you get paid more, and then by taking credits. So I got my master's right away because I wanted to make more money, but then I'm having to pay to go to college to earn that master's degree in order to get that raise. And then after my master's, I had to pay for more graduate credits so I could get another lane change is what we call them. So you have your steps going down and that's how many years you've been teaching and then you have your credits or your lanes to get lane changes. And that's the only way to get a raise in most districts that I'm aware of. Um, and the other issue with mine is it stops after 14 years. So once I've been teaching, I'm gonna be teaching for like 35 years and after I've been teaching for 14 years, I've already gotten as far, I just won't get a raise. So that's my issue with um, the pay. And also when you're a new teacher, you don't make enough money to not have a second job. Every teacher I know has to work either through the summer or nights and weekends or has some sort of a side gig to make ends meet. Um, maybe if you're a young teacher and you already have a significant other, you can get by with two incomes. But for myself, I did not have enough money to not have a second job. So then I'm pouring everything I have into being a teacher and then I'm supposed to have like the summer off to regenerate and that's what everyone always says, teachers have the summers off. Well, no we don't because we have to work them because we don't make enough to not. So I really just kind of felt exhausted there a lot of times because I would come back from the school year then and I wasn't refreshed because I was working full time in the um, summer as well. So that's one issue, it's just the pay in general. So again, they always people always say, you know that going into it. Well, people do and that's why there's a teacher shortage. So my first issue with teaching is the pay. Reason number two not to be a teacher is the work-life balance. It's really hard to find, especially as a new teacher, you always feel like there's more you can do. And there is always more you can do. And when you're a brand new teacher, you struggle with leaving work at work. You bring it home, you're staying late, you're working weekends, and it feels like you're drowning, but you feel like if you don't do anything, then you're gonna drown. So you just keep trying to do all this work and it's really hard to find that balance. Um, now that I've been in there for eight, teaching for eight years, it's a little easier for me, but there's still times where I'm like, ah, oh, I should be doing more, I should be doing this, that, or that. And it's, it's tough to just tell yourself, you can't do it all. But that's one thing with being a teacher is there's always more you could be doing. And it's just it's really hard to accept that you can't do it all. So that work-life balance is a really hard and fine line to walk. And it's, it's, it's super hard to find that balance you're not bringing work home and working outside your contract hours. I still definitely do have to work outside my contract hours some to get everything done. It's just not realistic to never work outside your contract hours. Now, am I there as much as I was like my second, third year teaching? No, I'm not, which is great, but it's still, you, you have to work that unpaid time to get things done. The next thing I'm gonna go into, which kind of ties with that work-life balance is gonna be getting time off. If you're sick, 
you have to find a sub and then you also have to write your sub plan. So if you wake up at 4 a.m. throwing up, you have to write sub plans for the next day to let your sub know what you're gonna do. I don't know of any other job where you have to write out minute by minute details of what you're gonna do the day if you're gonna be gone. Most people can just call in sick and catch up on their work. We can't do that. We have to leave those sub plans. We have to leave detailed plans for our subs. So that in itself is annoying. Um, and then the other part is just trying to get time off. In my current district, we get three personal days. And a lot of people will also make the comment like, yeah, but you get like your summers off, you have um, holidays off. Well, yeah, having holidays off is great, but that's time I spend with my family. So if I wanna go on a trip with my friends, I have three personal days I can use to make that happen during the school year. Otherwise, I have to wait for summer, and a lot of the times up until this next summer, I've worked full time all summer, so it's not like I have that full summer off to just go on a trip. So that's been another really hard part is just getting those time, that time off. Especially now with um, COVID and everything, there's, art, there's even more of a sub shortage. So finding subs when you are sick or when you're trying to get those personal days off, it, it's hard to come by subs. So getting time off is a super difficult part of being a teacher. And again, that goes with that work-life balance because if you're trying to take a trip for yourself, you have to first make those sub plans for the days you're gonna be gone if you can get a sub and you also have to be able to find a sub. So anyways, that's definitely a, another downside to being a teacher. Another downside or reason not to be a teacher, in my opinion, is the lack of respect from the public. I have been fortunate and I've worked with awesome parents, but I also see the ones who comment on our district's Facebook page and just make general posts or send emails to a school board about how teachers have it easy and how we've been let off the hook and just they, they come after you when they know nothing about teaching and it's just frustrating. It's uh, like I just get mad when I read them. So I, I went through a period where I just couldn't look at the comments because I would just get mad at these people for making these statements when they know nothing about what it's like to be a teacher. And you're always like you're that's what it is all the time. Like the old constantly be having people make these generalizations about teachers or um, not even just kind of making statements when they don't know the whole story too. So that's also is very frustrating is just the lack of respect and support from the public. Um, the next ones I'm going to go into are kind of more depending on the district. I don't feel this way right now, but a lot of my friends do. So the next reason is being micromanaged by their administration. Whether that's writing full on detailed lesson plans for every day and having to turn them in when you know the principal's not looking through all those who would, who would, who'd have time. Um, to being expected to be teaching the specific thing at the specific time and the same exact thing as the person across the hall from you. To not being able to put your own personal touches on things, only using the district approved curriculum. It's just a lot of people feel like they are just completely being micromanaged and have no flexibility in how they do things. Where I, again, I don't feel that way, but that is one thing to consider in some districts, you could be micromanaged by the administration. So definitely, if you feel that way, if you are a teacher, look for districts that maybe don't require some of those things and you're not under a microscope, that way you're not feeling like that. But definitely something to be on the lookout for as you look for teaching jobs. Another reason to think about not being a teacher is just the growing class sizes. There's a teacher shortage, which means that the class sizes are increasing. And there's also a para shortage because paras aren't paid enough either. So then you're getting less support in your classroom for students who need it. And then you, it, it takes a lot away from the rest of your students too. You feel like you're being pulled in every direction and, it, and it's exhausting. So growing class sizes, then you don't have that support from the paras and more is on your plate. And if you don't get that support from somewhere else within the school building, it's gonna feel like you're never reaching all of your students and it, it's mentally and physically draining. And my last reason that I have not to be a teacher is gonna be the lack of support from administration or principals. So again, I do not feel this way at my current school. I'm very blessed and love my school. But I have a lot of friends who feel like their principals aren't visible, that they don't do anything to help um, with any behavior problems. They just brush it off or they're, they're just not being proactive. They're not doing anything to help out the teachers or take anything off of their plates. Um, so that just, again, that's one where you would just want to make sure you have support from your principal when you are getting a job at a school because you can definitely have awesome principals and ones who aren't going to support you and will micromanage you. So that, those are the reasons I have not to be a teacher. Again, some of those are our whole system within the United States that need to be fixed. Some of them go from building to building. 
If you are going into teaching and have further questions, leave them in the comments. If you are a teacher right now and have other reasons that you have come across of not to be a teacher, I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.